I installed this exhaust along with some other components. I later decided to make my exhaust a little quieter, but I assumed I would take a performance hit due to the restrictions of flow. And boy was I wrong. Although I show a lot of top speed runs, really the performance gains that I'm getting out of most, if not all of my modifications is in the acceleration and torque department. I understood the importance of scavenging off of a motorcycle engine uh, and say a two stroke and why the pipes are shaped the way that they are. But my background and experience comes from turbocharged Civics back in the day when I was importing engines from Japan, throwing them into cars they don't belong in and boosting the shit out of them. In forced induction engines, we just want to shove the exhaust right through with as little to no restriction as possible. Why do loop exhausts even exist? Doesn't high flow automatically mean more power? What engine performance upgrades do well together and which ones don't? Do I even need a tune? Do I need an oil cooler? Do I need a larger fuel injector? I'm working on a series of videos that cover all of these topics. I'm going to lay out a path that I took so that you can copy and get the same results. Okay, the platform. It's a 2022 Honda Grom. It has a TST works intake, DHM cam, zoom loop exhaust, DHM flashed ECU, 14 tooth front sprocket, and 60% stiff clutch spring. Okay, now just focusing on the pipe and reflective pulses. Back pressure is a word to describe resistance of flow. Reflective pulses are pulses of gas that reverberate back and forth through the pipe. Again, staying general in this video, even if you run a straight pipe into the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure is around 21 pounds. At least that's what I recall from my diving days. Your exhaust, which is a lighter or thinner gas, runs into that. So that alone will cause a reflective wave. You can think about water running into a wall and how a reflective wave might return and interrupt or cause an interference pattern in the waves. For example, you can see the concept in this spring. The exhaust comes out, reflective pulses come back in, and this happens over and over again. That changes with the RPMs of your motorcycle, along with a few other things. Exhausts are tuned to use these reflective waves in a beneficial manner. The OEM exhaust for the Grom is tuned for that engine by a bunch of egghead nerds that know a lot more about this than I do. That's why you can put an air intake on and see some pretty good performance gains without changing your exhaust. So instead of using the word back pressure, the word we're looking for is tuned resonance. That's why you and me and many others have seen people add an exhaust to their Honda Grom and see a five to 10% performance decrease. That's right, a decrease. Even after a tune, my experience is no different. So in a long-winded summarization, we have a pulse or a wave leaving the engine into our exhaust pipe. That pulse or wave will eventually run into a restriction, such as a catalytic converter or a muffler or even just the atmosphere itself. Once this happens, a pressure wave will return back to the engine, back through the exhaust pipe. We want to time that reflective wave so that it aids in pulling and scavenging out the exhaust fumes at the precise time the exhaust valve is open. Inversely, we don't want that reflective wave hitting that open valve and working against it. The length of the pipe doesn't decide how much power your motorcycle makes, but more specifically, it aids you in adjusting your reflective wave. And you'll want to adjust your reflective wave to put your peak power in the RPM range that best serves you, your needs, and your engine. Another way to say that, let's say I have a range between 2,000 and 9,000 RPMs on my bike that's actually usable. I don't want to adjust my reflective waveform or my tune resonance to have my peak torque at 10,000 RPMs because I can't use it. I also don't want to tune it where it comes in at 1,000 RPMs and falls off at 4,000 RPMs. I'm looking to have my torque come on as soon as possible and fall off at around 9,000 RPMs. That definitely seemed to make a difference in the sound by keeping both of those DB killers and uh, sort of exhaust muffling devices in there. TST airbox to DHM cam and a DHM flash ECU. A DB killer or something like that. There was a screen, the screen that was used to be here. I relocated it to that point and then I put the Amazon GP DB killer device type thing here. And so theoretically I gave it more back pressure, but its top speed went through the roof. It kept all of its low end torque. Um, when I'm slam shifting, power shifting into second gear, front wheel comes off the ground. Just completely unexpected. I'm gonna go do some more research. All right, to recap, we have the exhaust wave 
pulse that comes out and travels through the exhaust and eventually hits a restriction, which would be the atmosphere, if I didn't have anything in this pipe at all restricting the flow. Once the wave pulse hits the atmosphere, there will be a return wave pulse that will come back through the system and then hit the valve mechanism at a specific time. Now, if I wanted to change the timing of whenever that returned, I would change the length of my pipe to change the, how much travel time there was before it hit resistance. Now, the exhaust is super loud uh, whenever it's just a straight through pipe. In order to get some muffling, now you're looking at different kinds of restrictions. I have a restriction here and a restriction here. So that's going to interfere with or adjust the timing and where do you want your power stroke to be in your rev limiter range. Now on a stock exhaust, there's usually some sort of catalytic converter with kind of a honeycomb screening effect that would be here. And what I discovered is there's a back pulse pressure from an exhaust that actually gets interfered with by that screening, which can help and or change uh, the pulse return here, kind of diffuse it some to mitigate some of the negative effects of that. And so what I have here is a catalytic converter type piece here installed, and then also a slight restriction here installed. And that's just to help with the overall sound, the decibel levels to keep it manageable. There is going to be a return pulse that comes back, but it actually gets diffused by the uh, short little catalytic converter piece that I have in here, and it helps eliminate some of the negative effects that I would get. So to answer the question at the front of the video, what the hell is this loop exhaust for, is to actually give me the length of pipe I desire in order to be able to adjust the return pulse back to my engine to be able to control where I want my power curve or tor torque curve to be. And so this extra length of pipe here allows me to have an overall longer length that I might not normally be able to get by just running a straight pipe back. And then with this system here, I can adjust it slightly to change the length of my pipe to adjust my power curve and uh, also allows me to uh, adjust my decibel levels and try to mitigate the losses that I would normally get from an in appropriate back pressure length in this pipe. So science is hard. That's the best I came up with. This is a system that works great for me. I can easily do 60, 65 miles an hour on this motorcycle with this current setup with this exhaust on it. And I'm happy with that. And it's got a nice low torque power curve. Thanks for stopping by the channel and support the sponsors in the description below.